Okay, good evening uh, everyone. Thanks for taking time to join us in this uh, webinar. My name is Willem Koops and I'm research coordinator at Servile NL, or in English, Dairy NL. Servile NL is an umbrella organization for the Dutch dairy industry. Our tonight's webinar is about the project Cows and Opportunity, and our presenter today is Michel de Haan from the Netherlands. This webinar is delivered by EuroDairy, an international work, uh, network aims to exchange and disseminate knowledge and innovation between farmers in Europe. You can find more about this uh, EuroDairy by visiting www.eurodairy.eu. Also, I would like to mention that this webinar will be recorded and will be available, available to watch back on the EuroDairy website, together with other webinars. Tonight's webinar has about 50 registrations from dairy farmers, vets, uh, advisors, researchers, etc., from different countries. Michel will run this presentation, which will take about 30 minutes, and there will be time to, for, for comments and questions at the end. You all uh, will be muted throughout the webinar, but if anyone wants to ask questions, then there is a possibility to use the box on your screen at the right. There you can ask questions and I will ask uh, Michel your questions at the end of the presentation. Our intention is to finish this webinar within an hour. So without further delay, I want to introduce our speaker for tonight. Michel is a researcher at Wageningen Livestock Research involved in research topics like dairy farm management and nutrient cycles. He's project leader of Cows and Opportunity, a project of dairy farmers, researchers and advisors. This long running project is very much appreciated, not only by the industry, I'm pretty sure every Dutch farmer knows this project, but it's also appreciated by our government. Dutch dairy farmers gained a lot of benefits from this project. In this webinar, we want to share these benefits and knowledge with our colleagues in other countries. So, without further delay, it's over to you, Michel. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for the broad introduction, Willem. So, um, uh, you all know me right now. Um, I'm Michel de Haan, I work for Wageningen University Research Center, um, but you uh, know me already. Uh, Willem introduced me quite well. Um, I'm project leader of the Project Cows and Opportunities, and this is mainly about dairy farmers, and, and this is applied research. So that's another thing we do at the Wageningen University. Um, what uh, do I want to talk about? Like, who are we? What is our project? How did we develop? what have we reached so far and what is the key to our success uh, because we uh, were founded uh, back in the year 2000 and uh, now it's 2018 and the network the project is still there so what what uh, what contributed to this success uh, who are we uh, well obviously this is the map of the netherlands and you see 17 dots over here and those dots are all farms and uh, dot number one is experimental farm de marke which is uh, one of your ktc uh, knowledge transfer centers and and well that's over here it started over here and those are the farms involved in uh, in our project cows and opportunities and uh, the different colors are about the uh, the soil type that's involved like the blue colors are the clay soil and the uh, yellow dots are the sandy soil, and we have one farm far in the south uh, that has a, a lush soil, and two in the west with a peat soil. So it's it's in our immense big country. Um, it's widely spread. Uh, all the the farms over there. Um, well, no, it's a very small country. So we are uh, well divided over the country. However, from the farm uh, way up in the north to Back in the southwest, it's probably four, five hours driving because for this farm, uh, we have to go, we have to drive through Belgium and go up here. Um, just some information where are we located? And who are we? Uh, well, we are in this project a group of dairy farmers. 
scientists, advisors, and policy makers, and we all co cooperate in a project. And um, what is really um, special for this group, uh, the, the group dairy farms at least have a positive attitude. The group is looking for solutions instead of um, complaining. Um, and we are, well, want to be open to the dairy sector, to the government and to the society and really honest to each other. And we believe that will bring us a lot farther than complaining. So it's a cooperation of dairy farmers, scientists, advisors, policy makers, and which is a, a, a good group to make it work. Um, it started all back in 1992 when uh, KTC De Marke, which is a picture of the KTC, was uh, originated, uh, founded back then. And that's the experimental farm. And then in 1998, 16 pilot farms were added. Um, the, the project is run by Wagner University Research. And uh, five advisory services are cooperating. 13 advisors, which means that every farm um, is connected to an advisor and some advisors are advising two farms. Two ministries are involved, agriculture and environment. And uh, Willem already told you they're really uh, interested in what's happening and they want to um, in implement what we are reaching uh, into, their, uh, into their policy. And uh, the project is financed by the Dutch government, half like uh, financed by those ministries and half by the Dutch dairy farmers, uh, financed by the, uh, the organization that Willem is representing. And um, goals of the project, like general goals, uh, we are helping the government with effective environmental policy. Yes, we are helping the government. Uh, the government is financing us. and. Um, well, we all benefit uh, from an effective environmental policy. And we are helped in the sector with feasible environmental policy. Like um, there's a dialogue uh, with uh, research, with the, with the project, uh, with the dairy sector and the government um, about a policy what would be feasible to the dairy sector. So this means uh, that we develop possibilities for farm specific entrepreneurship um like um farmers um can find the best way to prove how they are uh, environmental friendly um for that purpose we need research data so we collect data on this farm and we are exploring practical improvements on those farms so we are exploring consequences of environmental policy which means that um and our environmental policy, which is probably way ahead of us, that we try to implement this right now or right now already, at least four years ahead. And we try to develop practical measures for improvement, for improvement on the on the farm. I will come to that later. When we are talking about what we did we read so far. Um, what's our method in this project? The dialogue is really important. Um, we will want to solve the problems together, like the government, dairy farmers, research. Uh, it's, it's not just a problem for the government, it's our pr problem as well. And uh, one of the ways is objective research, uh, collecting data and doing research. So, and the farmers involved in the project, they work on a goal and they, they are taking measures to reach the goal. So every year we are making farm development plans and we are setting goals for those farms and they well, are taking measures to reach those goals. And very important is that every farmer has an advisor um, for collecting data and for advisory and helping the farmer out to reach those goals. Because we as researchers, we are not well going to those farms um, every month and, and the advisor uh, will go to the farm every month. And it's his job to be really on farm. We are monitoring the results on the farm uh, annually and sometimes monthly. Um, we are collecting data about feeding. So we are monitoring results about feeding and about uh, um, uh, applying fertilizer. And we are offering demonstration objects. Uh, farmers are giving lectures. 
uh, demonstrations objects are the farms, uh, other farmers, other groups, um, schools, um, whoever wants to go. Uh, can go to the farm and, and have an excursion over there. Farms are giving lectures, they sometimes are hired to give lectures, and we are informing the, the government, the sector, and the, the complete society what's happening in the dairy sector. Um, well, how did we develop? Um, I already mentioned that back in 1992, we started Experimental Farm de Marke, and very important that there was a challenging goal, and about at that time, it was about low mineral surpluses. Um, at this experimental farm, uh, maybe, well, a lot of you have already been there, but it's a really poor sandy soil. So it, it, it was really hard to get um, high, a lot of crop yield. Um, and, and it was important to get low mineral surpluses um, to prevent mineral uh, nitrate leaching. So that was the goal that they were aiming for. Um, and Experimental Farm reached that goal. However, uh, a lot of farmers will have their opinion that it would cost a lot of money. And back in 1998, uh, farmers were asked to apply for a network, for the Network Cows and Opportunities, to be part of the network, um, like, well, um, um, studying, experimenting how um, low mineral surpluses could be reached. So those farmers applied and um, there was a commission that are uh, judging who, which farmers could be in a project and which couldn't be. And in back in 1999, the, the project started, Cows and Opportunities. And the goal back then was to live up to the governmental regulations, which is still, but the governmental regulations are changing. A lot of times, maybe going back uh, over here, it was about measuring nitrate in the soil water, the groundwater. Sorry, and um, like developing the network, uh, we were really dynamic. In 2000, the, the network was starting, and it starts a little with a struggle. And the struggle was about um, dairy farmers um, saw that this. Um, network was founded, this project was founded, and they were anxious. They were um, telling us, well, now you are proving that we can farm with less uh, fertilizer application. And if you are proving that, uh, that will be law. We don't like that. We don't like that at all. Uh, but we kept on doing research and the research was objective and a lot of farmers um, well, were following the experiments and, and, and the government and the sector eventually liked what we were doing. So uh, the government implemented results and the farmers started to like the project and started implementing the results in their uh, farm management as well. And the, well, the, the, we are now a project like 18 years. So you can imagine that um, well, we had some ministers of agriculture, and below you see some pictures of ministers of agriculture that we had in those years. And so the regulations were changing, and uh, that led to changing goals in the project cows and opportunities in the past 18 years. And we also changed people in the network, like changing researchers, changing advisors, and also changing farmers in the network. And that caused new energy in the network and uh, extra and new results. Changing goals, which goals did we have in the past years? Like in the year 2000, it started with mineral balances. Uh, 2005, uh, mineral excretion in manure, uh, like phosphorus and, and nitrogen, which became really important. Uh, in 2010, greenhouse gas emissions and ammonia became important, became an important goal. And uh, from uh, 2015 uh, up to now, water quality, uh, flexible manure applications, and now still water quality is important, but the greenhouse gases are coming back. Um, the, the soil is coming back. The fertility of the soil is really becoming important. So those are the teams and the goals that we are will have been working with and are uh, 
working with now. Um, periodically, like um, every few years, there's a large evaluation of the project. Uh, do we still like what's going on? Uh, does the government like it? Uh, do they, we as their sector like it? Do we as farmers still like it? Is the communication still fair enough? So there's still, um, after a few years, we have a large evaluation moment of the project. What have we reached so far? Um, well, the results and impact, well, we had a lot of measures for environment and economics. Uh, obviously, a very low input of fertilizer in the dairy sector. Um, we proved that could be um, very effective uh, to improve the um, to to improve the efficiency. Um, this project also had part in a derogation that we reached in the uh, in the Netherlands uh, with our research data and um, well yeah research data about the, the feeding and, and and the fertilizer and the crop yield we could prove that a derogation would be feasible would be okay for the Netherlands and uh, we um, developed some farm specific tools uh, about excretion like uh, there is a tool that farmers can calculate what's the specific uh, excretion of nitrogen and phosphorus instead of standards and we developed well we helped developing the ENCA instrument annual nutri nutrient cycling assessment and uh, some other pilots about um, uh, about um, uh, applying fertilizer according to the crop yields and this all led to uh, acceptance of policy in the dairy sector like we are uh, contributing to the policy uh, the, the dutch policy uh, as a project so the dairy sector um, kind of accepts how the policy is developing in the netherlands and it's helping accepting the dutch policy in the hague and in, in brussels as well pictures um what kind of results that we reached what i'm talking about um experimental farm the marke and cows and opportunities we um well we kind of uh, invented cover crops like after mice maize yield or or during maize uh growing the maize uh we are seeding grass as well and this grass uh, will take up the nitrogen which is left in the soil so um preventing nitrate leaching more, more and more um manure and fertilizer application uh, for a low nitrogen surplus and, and um, low nitrate leaching the timing must be okay uh, the amount of nit uh, nitrogen application must be okay the weather conditions must be okay and all well that we try to optimize on all those dairy farms to reach a low nitrogen surplus and high nitrogen efficiency um, and high feed efficiency which is uh, um, well really important for I would say economics so, uh, using less feed for the same amount of milk or for more more milk but it's really important for a uh, uh, methane emission if the feed efficiency is high the methane emission uh, would be low as well and the the, the gear here on the left is uh, one of the instruments that we use right now on the dairy farms to meet methane emission the actual methane emission on the dairy farms uh, we will um, we will measure right now and another thing that we will uh, kind of invented um, after grassland uh, it's not necessary to put fertilizer on maize and that's what uh, experimental the farm experimental farm the market um, uh, studied at first and and uh, uh, most of the of the cows and opportunity farms followed that that's it's not necessary to put fertilizer on the maize after one year of grassland um, so really, uh, that's uh, preventing the mineral losses uh, after uh, growing maize. That's helping a lot. And another thing that we will uh, gave a push in the 
past years is uh, manure separation, separating manure in a thick and a liquid fraction. Like the liquid fraction is uh, uh, could uh, be applied more like a, a artificial fertilizer. Um, however, in the, the past years, uh, the Dutch dairy farmers tend to use the thick fraction more and more in the uh, cubicles for bedding, which is interesting as well. But it, it started for the liquid fraction. And the soil management, uh, organic matter, compaction, uh, is becoming really important on those farms. Uh, like now, water quality, surface water quality is being becoming important. So we want to prevent this, that uh, water is running off to ditches. And we want to prevent this as well, that water uh, will be on the, on the, on the, on the fields. Um, the, um, the, the organic matter would be okay. Uh, we don't want compaction. Um, so the, the, uh, we want water to get into the soil um, uh, quite quickly. And I was talking about farm specific pilots and tools like we um, uh, kind of invented. We, we uh, made a farm specific excretion tool to prove what is the actual excretion on the dairy farm instead of standards. Um, the pilot, we are uh, running a pilot, uh, farm specific phosphorus application and nitrogen application um, um, that depends on the yield of phosphorus and nitrogen with the crops, with maize and grassland. If the yield is quite high, the application could be higher and um, well, to grow more crops and to import less feed from abroad. And now we are working on a farm water index to uh, improve the water quality. And we need all the fields from the farm and, and, and the soil characteristics and the management of the farmer uh, to score some risk about water quality. And the last one is ANCA, Annual Nutrient Cycling Assessment. And um, uh, in Dutch, that's Kringlokweiser, and that's now obliged for all Dutch dairy farms um, to fill that, that tool out. So that's um, really becoming a big issue in the Netherlands already. Um, what are the keys to our um, success? Well, summing up, uh, really important is a challenging problem like uh, we had on, on uh, experimental farm de Marke when we started and still any perspective, we must see a solution, some kind of solution and a way, a method uh, to deal with it. And the next step is that you need enthusiastic farmers. And our way was that farmers must apply to, um, to the project. Like they must apply, they must um, send us an email. We want to be part of your project. And, and collecting data, objective research is uh, key as well. Uh, you must be reliable. People must trust you, the government and the dairy sector. And uh, very important for us is that uh, there is an intensive cooperation with the extension service um, that's helping the farmers to um, to to have their head with the project um, a lot of a lot of times of the week and um, well it's helping with the communication as well the extension service are uh, talking to many many other farmers and what they learn with our project they will tell those other farmers as well and that has to do with communications uh, communication is really important as well uh, you must tell what we're doing, you must show what we're doing. Farmers are um, giving lectures, farmers are invited, uh, farmers, um, um, other farmers go to uh, uh, go on tour to those farmers. So communication uh, is really important, not only us as researchers. And, and well, over here we have a golden triangle. Uh, um, a lot of times we say there must be a cooperation uh, to the government research and the dairy sector, which would be a golden triangle if those uh, organizations work together. Um, well, then do we 
what are the advantages for the uh, dairy farmers? Um, well, with this project, we offer living honest examples to expire. Um, a lot of possibilities to save extra costs. And we are reaching feasible environmental policy with our dialogue uh, to, the, to the government. And we are also offering a dialogue uh, with the society and information for the society, which is becoming more and more impo important. It's not just uh, the dairy sector that we are talking with and about. It's also the society that's talking about the dairy sector. And uh, the government um, has some advantages of this project as well. Well, we have some, we offer objective research. And with this objective research, they can implement the data, the results in their regulations. And well, we also um, give them access to well, the dairy sector with what we are doing. And they really, really like that. Um, well, I'm, I'm coming to an end and, and uh, giving some take home message. Um, well, what's my take home message? Uh, cooperate and learn, work together um, and really work together with the government, dairy sector and research. And I think the government is not the enemy. Uh, many dairy farmers think, well, the government's the enemy, uh, want to destroy my farm and us. Uh, I don't think that's the case. And, and at the end, uh, I would say alone you go fast, uh, but together you will go further, which is um, really important to get further. So cooperation makes the makes beautiful music, I would say. Um, well, this would be the end of what I have to say. So I would say thank you for your attention and I give the word back to Willem. Okay, thanks, Michel, for your very good uh, presentation and very clear. I think uh, you finished with a take home message of cooperation. Now, one of the intention of uh, Eurodairy is to have more cooperation between farms from uh, different countries. So that uh, I like that, uh, that uh, take home message. Um, before I look at the questions I have, so people know that uh, all listeners know that you can ask questions uh, in a box uh, at the right. Um, I think I have here <clears throat> Are you still okay, Willem? Are we still okay? Yeah, I'm not quite sure where Willem has gone, so I'll just pick up questions okay. um, here for you. And um, so we've got the first one that's come in from Ray. And um, thanks, Michelle. The project has been a success in addressing resource efficiency, environmental impact, and policy implementation. What is the experience and relationship with farm economic performance? Have you quantified the costs saved and or productivity gains at farm level there's quite a few questions there for you yes this this one is about economics yeah right, so right. yeah the first question what is the experience and relationship with farm economic performance yes yes we are uh, collecting data about economics as well um all those farmers are um, well in a network in an economic network um, so we can collect objective data and those data, those economic results uh, can be and will be compared with the uh, results of the complete dairy sector in the Netherlands, like with the, the average result of the dairy sector. The same organization uh, that's doing the economics of the dairy sector is collecting the data with these farms as well. And um, um, it's uh, we've seen that those farms, those pilot farms, those farms that I'm working with, they are larger. So I have more cows, more intensive, which means they produce more milk per hectare. And um, um, still uh, the income per hundred kilo of milk is on average uh, higher uh, than, than the average of the complete dairy sector, uh, which for me is kind of a signal uh, that um, um, improving uh, environmental or taking environmental uh, measures 
uh, doesn't hurt economics. Does this answer your question a little? Yes, great, thank you. So the second part of that question is, have you um, quantified the cost saved and or productivity gains at farm level? Um, I'm not sure if I quite understand your question. I didn't hear it really correct. Okay, um, have, you, have you quantified the cost saved and or productivity gains at farm level? Um, and, and again, sorry, what, what have we quantified? It's okay, Ray said it's more or less the same question, so you've answered that for him. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. Well, maybe, maybe it, it's a question about the measures. What are the economics of certain measures? Or... Yeah, I think, yeah, so um, I think he was just asking um, about the economic performance and was there maybe a relationship between some of the factors with economic gains um, over the others? Yes, um, well, we think um, one of the, no, some measures, most of the measures about uh, increasing efficiency, like feed efficiency, uh, uh, being efficient in, in uh, applying fertilizer, like mineral efficiency and um, um, being efficient in feeding probably means a higher milk yield or uh, using less feed, uh, using less concentrates or um, well, uh, um, producing um, good feed, high quality feed. So that probably is saving of that that saving cost. And on the other hand, um, being efficiency on um, on applying fertilizer mineral efficiency on on uh, applying manure uh, will save uh, fertilizer or and will save feed costs so um uh, that's saving again that's saving and and uh, some other measures are about uh, um, uh, herd management keeping less young stock um, um, having a quite high uh, milk yield uh, high content um, with fat and protein, so that's that's kind of working out. And there were some other measures, some other things that were um, uh, costing more money. Um, more, I would say many of those farms they increased the herd and uh, herd size, and and uh, uh, they bought more land, and that's costing money. So the loans are probably. Will not probably are higher than in average in the Netherlands. So the F, the annual payback, annual cost for paying back the loan is higher. So that, that's what's those farmers were developing or were growing faster. So they are a little more efficient, having a less cost uh, for being efficient. And um, um, on the other hand, there are some extra costs. Maybe okay. that's helping. Great. Um, just a reminder um, for those on the webinar to type in their questions um, in the box on the right hand side of your screen. Um, I think Willem is back, so I will pass the reins back to him if you can hear us. No, okay, I'll carry on. Um, so another question has come through. Um, what are the next steps? So it's quite an open question for you there, Michelle. So what what are the what are the next steps? So is there gonna be another project? Is there gonna be um more steps in this project? Um, I'm, I'm, I don't really understand what you mean, or I didn't hear it quite well. What are the next or the... What, what will be the next steps? Are the next steps? Yes. Okay. Um, or maybe the next goals. I expect uh, the water quality aspect will continue and the greenhouse gases will become more important, uh, like the, the government um is putting a lot of emphasis right now on methane emission uh from the dairy sector and right now we are um doing a lot of 
measuring of methane on the dairy on those dairy farms and uh, well still the water aspect like in 2027 the the water directive must be implemented at least in the netherlands probably in, in all eu so um well the dairy farms must be more and more aware of of the water aspect and that's that's uh, happening right now so i would say greenhouse gases and water quality is that answer to the question that's great thank you very much michelle um david to send in a question could you perhaps give more information on the anchor tool and how it was received by average dairy farmers who may not have been doing detailed nutrient planning in the past uh, again the more information about about the yeah. anchor tool okay okay about the anchor tool yeah um um yeah it's now obliged to fill out by all dutch dairy farmers and the obligation didn't come from the government but came from the uh, from the dairy industry like Fries and campina and all other uh, processes uh, made an obligation to fill that out and the ANCA um, is about um, um, like uh, the efficiency like um, mineral surpluses uh, it's it's calculating greenhouse gas emissions it's calculating ammonia emissions it's calculating um, excretion of nitrogen and manure and it's also calculating crop yields uh, in dry matter like grassland, maizeland, in dry matter and in nitrogen phosphorus as well. Um, so with the tool, uh, dairy farmers um, can register uh, what's the performance on all those, well, let's say environmental team, but all those uh, teams should be um, considered as a farming team as well. Um, well, now it's obliged, and not all dairy farmers like it, uh, uh, mainly about the fact that it's obliged. Uh, but the dairy sector, uh, like the dairy industry, uh, will um, probably do some steering in the near future with those uh, environmental performances, like uh, about uh, the um, soil, um, soil nitrogen surplus and phosphate surplus. Um, it will be registered. And probably, um, I would say, one or farmers will get some bonuses if they perform quite well. Uh, and maybe is that an answer to the question, or is the question a little deeper about how the ANCA works? I think that covers the question. Um, okay. David has just sent through a follow-up question. Is it an online and how long does it take to complete? Yeah, very good. Um, now, uh, now um, while the dairy sector is obliged to fill it out, it's an online tool, uh, but we made an, 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 an standalone tool as well. It actually, it can be downloaded uh, and there's an English version of it, then we call it Anka Dairy. And it's a uh, the English tool, and that's a standalone tool. And well, to fill it out completely from scratch, it would take it would take quite a while uh, because it's uh, it starts with uh, with the herd and with the milk yield, the milk production, annual milk production, and then next step is to register um, the amount of um, feed that you have stored, like the the, the starting stock. And the amount of feed that you will uh, are storing in during the season and the end stock and uh, then a lot of information about applying fertilizer and manure and um, about exporting the manure um, so a lot of farm specific information uh, if you start from scratch it will take you i would say uh, an hour or two three you will need to collect the information however um, the dairy sector is, uh, has made a, a, a database uh, where most of those input uh, first has been collected already, like the, the animals that the farmer owns, the, uh, the stocks, um, 
the feedstocks, the amount of concentrate that's bought in, the milk that has been uh, produced and uh, sold to the processors, the um, uh, manure that has been um, exported, the fertilizer that has been imported, that, that has is all registered somewhere already. And that uh, is collected in a central database, which is input of this anchor tool. So that will reduce the time to fill it out um, a lot. So now I hope filling out this anchor tool uh, would be between uh, a half, half an hour and an hour. Great, thanks, Michelle. Um, just so attendees are aware tonight, we do have a previous Eurotary webinar on the anchor tool, um, which is available to watch back on the Eura Dairy website. I um, have a few more questions that have come through um, Michelle. So is it applicable to other sectors? Um, so I'm guessing this is about the anchor tool, i.e. can the beef and sheep, pigs um, okay. sectors use it as well? Okay, um, for now it's um, only applicable to the dairy sector. However, um, our colleagues uh, developed something like the anchor tool for uh, for the crops, for arable, for the arable sector. Um, well, uh, sheep and goat can be filled uh, combined with our anchor tool. However, that's it's um, um, there are no uh, we don't we didn't develop specific rules for the um well let's say for the uh, animals which are not uh, uh dairy cows so those rules are just um uh, let's say fed according to the feed table so that would mean there's no anchor tool yet for uh goat sheep and beef sorry <laughs> great thank you um i think we have a question now going back to cows and opportunity have you okay. seen changes in the attitude or approaches of advisors, advisory service given the results achieved in this project through this way of working with dairy farmers? Um, well, changes in attitude. Well, we have different um, um, advisory extension services that are working with us. Um, and well, we, we pay them to work with us. And uh, it's very important uh, that they do the um, work, that they deliver the figures, that they deliver the data that we want, and they, we want them to visit the dairy farmer and to make a, um, um, some short notice of, about the, the fitness of the dairy farm so that we know what they have been talking about and what they are doing over there. And some of the advisors are really cooperating with us and some others, well, um, we hear only once in a while from them so there are differences and the, the advisors that uh, are really cooperating with us we are cooperating with them in other projects and many other projects as well and they are um using the results that we are reaching a lot in in their uh well in their advisory and um so we are really connected with some of those advisors uh, now, and and they probably uh, benefit from the uh, information that they are getting together with us in their uh, advisory practice. Yeah, I'm sure of that. Is that helping a little? Yes, that's great. Thank you, Michelle. And um, just remind everyone, uh, if you do want to ask a question, please do type them in. And um, we have a question here from Tim. What is the arable equivalent of anchor tool? Okay, uh, <laughs> what's the, the arable equivalent? Well, it's it's now in um, uh, in an uh, experimental phase, so I don't. I I wonder if there is a. It's not open yet. I would say it's it's uh, in a spreadsheet phase, and I believe it's now the real the researcher who developed it uh, now or of months ago a few months ago it, it reported to the contractors it was the arable sector that they uh, are reporting to and they are now making up their minds what uh, what do they want to do with it mm -hmm. so it's it's not open for use yet okay so it's watch this space yeah okay 
Uh, we'll just give it a few seconds just to see if we've got any more questions coming through. Um, I'll just take this opportunity to remind everyone um, that we do have a few Euro Dairy webinars coming up um, throughout October. Please do take a look on the Euro Dairy website um, to see if any of those are of interest to you. Um, we have another webinar tomorrow night focusing on um, using the data out of mixing wagons. And so we just had a comment saying thank you, Michelle. Um, one more question that's come through. You have not mentioned biodiversity. Is this of interest to the farmers? What, what didn't I mention? Sorry. Biodiversity. Biodiversity. Yes. Um, OK. Yeah, very good. Could be a, an issue for the uh, next year's one of the next steps as well. Um, however, biodiversity is, is uh, one topic very hard to catch a lot of debate about biodiversity and um, um, yes uh, it's it's not a, a project goal yet I would say um, however um, it's it's in the mind of um, well at least some or, or half of the dairy farmers involved in the project um, they are uh, growing many different crops and they have, um, they are using some other well let's say uh, flowers or some biodiverse crops uh, close to ditches so they they are aware of the biodiversity and they are aware of the biodiversity discussion in the Netherlands and um, uh, but it's not a project goal yet I would say but could be in uh, interesting the coming years yes yes there is um part of your theory that is looking at biodiversity and um it's definitely showing some interesting results and um, looking and measuring biodiversity on um your dairy pilot farms so there's more information on biodiversity available as well and um, if you search for your dairy i'll just Give it a few more seconds to see if there's any more questions coming through, Michelle. Um, okay. I'm not sure if Willem is back. I am back. Oh, oh ah. there you go, Willem. I'll okay. pass back over to you. <laughs> OK, I'm very sorry because my microphone, there was something happening and that was why I was unmuted. But I think uh, Suwan did a great job to ask the, the questions. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there are uh, some other questions. Maybe uh, to finish up, uh, maybe I have the last questions. Uh, I was wondering, uh, maybe you could say something about the motivation of the, the farmers. Why did they join this uh, project? Because uh, I think when they have to uh, try out uh, some uh, some new things in the farms, they have some risk. And, and what are the benefits? What is the added value or what is the motivation of the farmers uh, to join this project? Maybe you can say something about that, Michel? Yes, yeah, of course. Very good question. Um, uh, just like all other people, uh, there are many different kinds of farmers. And, and I'm sure in, in all other countries, there are many different kinds of farmers. So um, we, there are some farmers that want to join the project that are really want to learn from research and want to learn from other farmers. Um, like I showed the picture in the beginning of the presentation, like it's really diverse across the country and they want to see what's happening in other parts of the country and want to learn from them and want to well, want to learn from us, from research, want to learn from advisors. So they really, that's one of the reasons that they want to join. Um, the other reason is that uh, farmers tell me, well, we know uh, something is always happening, uh, something in, in law, something uh, in, in what processes want, something what people want with the dairy sector. So if we are joining this project, uh, we're quite sure that we are well, let's say in the front of the train that we are aware of what's going to happen, and and that will we will still be um, we will still be a farmer if if we are uh, quite ahead of what's uh, what's happening to us to the dairy sector, and and uh, some other farmers uh, are really really like communication. 
they want to be in a picture uh, do they really like that so there are a lot of different kinds of farmers like there are a lot of different kinds of peoples and those farmers uh, that uh, are applying for a project they really are front runners they want to be um, well in the picture they want to be involved they are eager to get some new knowledge this is answering the question Yes, I think you give some uh, clarity about what is their uh, motivation. Uh, yeah. I'm looking uh, at uh, if there are still some other questions. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so maybe I should uh, round uh, up uh, this webinar. Um, of course, thanks uh, everyone for listening to this webinar. I think uh, it was an uh, interesting webinar. Uh, uh, please keep an eye on the Euro Dairy website because we have also other webinars. And as I told before, uh, this webinar is recorded and you can uh, have a look at it uh, in the future uh, again. Uh, of course, a very special thanks to Michel for taking time to present this webinar. Um, and uh, also last but not least, I want to thank Sue and Howardson from AHDB as she made this uh, webinar technical possible. And last, uh, and also uh, when I was uh, by a mistake unmuted, by, uh, mistake of myself, she uh, did a good job in asking the questions, etc. So very thank again, uh, Sue and, and also Michelle. And to all, I want to say thank you and have a good night. And maybe we see each other on the Eurodairy website. Bye. Very good. Thank you.